Hello everyone, so this is my third time filming this review video because I just cannot seem to get my words to be correct with this book. And that is Dance 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 by Haruki Murakami. I have done reviews for every single Haruki Murakami book and this one is just giving me a lot of issues. I feel like I'm always slightly confused about my feelings for Murakami because his works are just very confusing, but I've never had this much issue just trying to figure out my own thoughts on a book before. I went into my Goodreads review and completely erased it and wrote it again from scratch just trying to like figure out my thoughts. Very late at night, it was like 11 o'clock at night and I go to bed at like 9 so I was obviously just very confused and when I was trying to edit my YouTube video for this I just, I was so contradictory, it didn't make any sense, it was like a three minute review and I was like I need to redo this. So I'm going to try to put my thoughts into words that make sense and also convey my actual feelings. So to begin with, this is Dance 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 by Haruki Murakami, which is the fourth book in the Rat series by him, which goes Hear the Wind Sing, Pinball 1973, and uh, Wild Chief Chase, and then Dance Dance Dance. And I am a personal believer that you should read the books in order. I realize they are technically can be read as standalones, but I personally think you should definitely read them in order just to get the full effect of it, especially because Dance 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 is a direct continuation from A Wild Sheep Chase. It follows um, the unnamed narrator just a couple of years after the events of The Wild Sheep Chase, and he goes back to the hotel where that entire novel basically takes place while he is looking for his girlfriend. Let me begin by saying I went into this book with very high expectations because I adored A Wild Sheep Chase. It was one of my favorite Haruki Murakami books. I'm thinking I'm putting that at number two, just under, um, oh, win of what? Wind Up Bird? Oh my god. Therefore, my opinion might be a bit swayed because I was going into this going, this is the fourth book in the series, and I was expecting a really good ending, but I just... I probably was a little bit biased because I was expecting something huge. Now in this review I am going to be comparing it a quite a bit to its prior novel in the series, so if you don't like comparison kind of reviews, you probably aren't going to like this video, but I did think that it was appropriate to compare the two because I did just read A Wild Sheep Chase and this is a direct continuation of it, like a direct sequel, while the first two books could probably be read by themselves, but this one is like directly afterwards. So the reason that I think I enjoyed A Wild Sheep Chase so much was that it is the perfect in-between of Haruki Murakami of his character exploration kind of books and his plot driven books. Therefore, since these two are kind of right next to each other in chronological order, I was expecting this book to be on par with it and be a mixture of the character internal monologue, exploration of ideas and stuff, and an actual plot. And although I do really enjoy character exploration books, I do much prefer for the balance, kind of that Wind Up Bird, Kafka, and a Wild Sheep Chase had, and unfortunately Dance 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 did lean more towards the character exploration portion, which again I didn't really mind, but I did prefer the balance kind of idea, and also I was expecting it after the previous novel. One thing I just felt like this book was very lacking in from the first book, again if you didn't read a Wild Sheep Chase I don't think you would noticed this at all, but it was something that I was missing, was humor. In A Wild Sheep Chase we have the bubbly, fun-loving, adventurous girlfriend who's kind of weird as hell and kind of clairvoyant and stuff like that. We have the chauffeur who takes care of their cat and is kind of ridiculous and he names the cat who hasn't had a name forever. And we have even the unnamed narrator kind of become self-aware and like I said like I could totally just picture him like looking into the camera like he's on the office during a couple of the scenes with him because it was just more of a funny story and I was expecting that humor to kind of carry on into this book and it just didn't. But again, if you had just read this book I don't think you would have missed that aspect so I am probably a little bit biased in that sense. Talking about this story by itself, I believe that the beginning and end were very strong. 
Immediately from the beginning, I was hooked because I was so excited that it was the same characters following the same kind of plot line, and we even go straight back to the Dolphin Hotel, which I was just so excited about because that is one of my favorite settings now in books. I just love the Dolphin Hotel and the whole mystery behind it and everything like that. It was a very strong beginning, immediately hooked me, and I was super excited to continue reading. But then it kind of fell into a bit of a rut for me. The entire kind of middle section of this book where he's just kind of hanging out with a 13 year old girl named Yuki, a receptionist named Yumiyoshi, and his old friend Gotanda, I just felt like a lot of conversations were happening but nothing was advancing the plot, the conversations really didn't do anything for anyone, and they were just kind of pointless in my opinion. I, I understand having lots of dialogues and different interactions to build character, but I just felt like these didn't really do much. I also can't decide whether it was creepy as hell with the unnamed narrator and Yuki, who is a 13 year old girl who he acts like a father figure towards, but he calls himself her boyfriend, which I cannot for the life of me tell if this is a translation thing and this is kind of like the Korean opa kind of word and it just didn't translate correctly into English. Please tell me if you know Japanese if that is kind of what it was supposed to be like because to me it was very creepy having this 35 year old man hanging out with this 13 year old girl and calling himself her boyfriend. It was a little weird. Didn't I, I was just very confused. I was kind of like, maybe this is like an opa thing, but I, I didn't know Japanese has that or not, but it was, it was weird. I'm hoping it was a translation error, but that was weird. <laughs> but overall, the reason that I don't think I enjoyed this book nearly as much as its previous is that there was just this giant section in the middle of meaningless conversations with those three characters. The main an unnamed, unnamed narrator just going to the movie over and over, which I understand has a significance to the plot, but just kind of not going anywhere. Like, I kind of saw where this was going, but the na unnamed narrator didn't seem to, and we just kind of got stuck in a limbo for like a hundred pages of just nothing happening. <laughs> I was also a little disappointed because the Sheep Man comes back in this book and he makes a couple of appearances, but I just really wish we had gotten to learn a bit more about him because he is such a fascinating character. I really wish we had gotten to explore more of his character and what all of that kind of stuff was about. I also really did like the ending of this book, not so much with Yumiyoshi and like the romance, I guess? I don't even know if you can call it that aspect of it, but the whole thing with his girlfriend and we are stepping our toe into the kind of supernatural elements that come into a win- uh, wind up bird, I keep trying to say win, wind up bird, I noticed quite a few parallels between what was starting to be revealed in this book and that that happened in that book. Again, I'm kind of questioning if this unnamed narrator is Toru Okada, but I have no idea. I have never seen another person make those connections, but I don't I don't know. But I saw the I saw connections so much in this entire The Rat series with Wind Up Bird, but I could be crazy. Basically, overall, I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars, which is great. I hate when people are like, 3 stars? Well, I'm not gonna read it because that means it sucks. No, 3.5 stars is awesome. It was such a gripping, fun, entertaining book. It had its flaws. Every book has its flaws, except for Three Souls, which is perfect. But all books have its flaws, and it might seem like I am kind of uh, focusing and emphasizing the flaws of this book, but that's mostly just because those are the things that I notice the most and have the most to talk about, because the pros of this book are the same as every single Haruki Murakami book. It has amazing passages that you just have to mark. It is creepy, it is haunting, especially this one, it's just creepy and eerie. It's written beautifully, it's whimsical, the char the unnamed narrator is one of my favorite characters ever, honest to god, I need to redo my favorite characters list because this guy needs to be up there, but I enjoyed it for every for the reason I enjoy every Haruki Murakami book and the reason he is my favorite author because he can tell a story, he can develop characters, he can show the weirdest things ever and I don't know where things pop out of his brain but he is brilliant. 
Therefore, again, I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I really, really enjoyed it. And I obviously love Haruki Murakami. If you guys have been with me the past couple of months, you guys have seen my adventure of reading him. Um, and I hope I've inspired some of you guys to pick up his books because he really is absolutely incredible. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this review of Dance 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 by Haruki Murakami. And I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!